Hey all, your OS reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Oasis My First Camera. So as the name kind of implies, this is a camera more geared towards kids or just kind of more a novelty item in general. But what's interesting here is it has a thermal printer built on in. So whenever you take an image, you have the ability to instantly print it out. And it's not using the same kind of Polaroid Z-Ink technology, which is in color. Those thermal paper can be more expensive per print versus this one. It all prints in black and white, kind of like a receipt that you might find in a store and the paper as a result is much more common and a lot cheaper to print on. Still it's kind of an interesting idea and the parent company Oasis it has also made other kind of interesting accessory gadgets in the past where we've looked at their e-ink case for iPhones. It has a second display on the back as well as they have some hybrid smartwatches. Although this time under the My First branding is a bit more geared again towards kids. So some of the specs here include a 12 megapixel sensor. It has dual lens so it has another internal facing lens as well for selfies. IPS 2.4 inch display on the back. Comes with three rolls of the printer paper in the box but again these are easily replaceable and then supports micro SD cards that can hold up to 32 gigs of storage. Otherwise in terms of some other special effects you are able to also record video up to full HD resolution. We also get a included kind of lanyard strap. Here are the aforementioned rolls of the thermal paper so it is going to be kind of a small roll because it has to fit within the size of the camera so that's one thing to keep in mind and overall we also get a charging cable that is using what looks like micro USB although it also comes with a type A to type C adapter if you're trying to connect it to a let's say a MacBook or an ultra portable that doesn't have a full-size USB port then you also get a few stickers for further decorating the photos that you print out along with just a quick user guide. It is worth mentioning by the way that the camera does come pre-included with a 32 gigabyte card out of the box. This port is a little bit hard to actually pull out just as a side note. It's located next to the micro USB port which are both covered up underneath a flap that prevents any water from leaking in. Taking a closer look at it, it is a pretty fun and attractive overall size. The entire material here is coated in a soft touch rubber which makes it resistant to fingerprints and pretty easy to grip. There's two what looks like ears on the top which are actually the hooks where you can attach the lanyard. In fact you can even attach it onto both sides if you want to carry it like this. It can open this up where we can then pop in the cartridge. Camera is missing a standard tripod mount on the bottom but it is flat so you can set it down like that and otherwise we have a speaker on the edge here that can play back sound if you are recording in a video mode. The selfie camera is using the same 12 megapixels and then these keys here which are oversized just so that kids can even use it are pretty tactile and easy to press. Here it is next to something like a 6 inch phone just for reference here in terms of size. Pretty cute nonetheless more as a novelty or toy that is. Now some things to keep in mind here being that this model doesn't have any wireless capabilities so no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I think maybe having Bluetooth could have been an extra functionality that would have been useful if for example you wanted to print something from a companion app and then push it over. For controls we have a power key that after turning it on by pressing for a few seconds you can also tap on once to switch into the front facing or the rear facing camera. So if I tap on it now you can see it now switch over and once again into the back. And on the side here this acts as the shutter key. So overall the placement is not bad. It's pretty comfortable since the camera is a little bit chunkier and larger than average. It will be harder to reach on the very top especially for kids that have smaller hands. So it makes sense to have this act as that key and you can also long hold to record on video. One other omission on the hardware though would be a camera flash. So there's no even LED flash which means this is not going to be something that works well in the dark. So the display here again measures 2.4 inches is not the largest in the world but it is at least an IPS panel which means that if I kind of tilt it at different axes colors for the most part don't wash out which is good. Some observations here being that it doesn't have the widest angle lens in the world and that means to get more objects into the frame of the shot you have to kind of back away a little bit further from what you are pointing at. And one other observation is it's a pretty basic lens meaning that it's also fixed focus. If you are trying to point at something really close to the camera lens it's not going to be very sharp because it will work best with landscape shots and that is 
maybe one slight con. If you're trying to scan in documents or anything like that, it's not going to look uh, quite as crisp as I think it should be. But as long as you are within, let's say, about a feet or further away from objects, it looks all right. At the very least, the process of snapping an image is pretty fast. Now, if we tap on the media key here, we'll be able to visualize what some of the photos here that we just took, and then plus and minus keys will act as the left and right. We can also take a quick look at some of the other snaps here that I was just taking briefly before we started the video. And overall, again, it's okay, but you have to just uh, really keep your expectations modest in terms of they do have a nice overall tint to them. It's not too washed out and overall looks fairly realistic, which is not bad. But again, details and sharpness is also lacking a little bit, especially for things that are closer to the camera lens. I can then tap on the print key, which is again on the side here and watch it kind of print out here live. Let's tap on that. So here it's kind of worn in three seconds and then the image will start to come out, which is actually a pretty fun cool process, I have to say. And afterwards, because it is using a thermal print, it is instantly dry. As long as you aren't using it in extreme temperatures, uh, it will just preserve itself. It's also a sticky kind of paper that it's been printed on. Take out the other side and then just attach it onto a piece of paper or stick it onto whatever surface. Here is an image that has a better contrast to it since we're pointing it directly at a light. And again, it's a inkless printer in the sense that the thermal paper contains all the ink crystals already, which are just activated when the printer gets hot. So you don't have to actually worry about any liquid inside the uh, camera itself, which is pretty interesting. So here is that image, and this one does look a lot better. So ideally, you do want to be in an area that is very brightly lit, I would say. I can take a look at the image quality. I can lower the resolution if you want to, for some reason, to take up less space, uh, since the color images, keep in mind, have also been saved into the camera itself. Density, in terms of the quality of those prints can also be adjusted. Right now we are already at high. And then you can also tap on the plus and minus keys when you're in the main menu to change through some of the preset filters, such as a black and white shot, which actually might make sense because since this will really mirror the quality of the photos that you're getting afterwards, you can probably play around with that. There's also a sepia mode. Here's a grid icon that you can bring on. Some of these stickers that you can add to the photos include printing out also a to-do list on the side and the photo just on the edge. Since the photos that you print out, you can actually write on just like any paper. In fact, let's give this a quick shot. So I can even tap on the print icon while in this live screen. So it will just print out a snap of what it's seeing right now. And using this calendar example, it will print out first that image. And then we have another kind of calendar on the side where you can use to maybe write things in. Here's one that says to and from. Other ones here that says this belongs to someone and other kind of comic fonts as well that you can pick between and even larger borders and effects. Uh, so there's quite a few of these that you can take a look at uh, that are colorful and built directly into the camera's options and settings. So let's just cycle through. Really gives you a pretty diverse selection that we are seeing here. Some of these which are better for portraits uh, as people are looking at it. Now again, the selfie camera has a pretty much identical functionality as the rear camera, so you won't really find a difference in terms of the resolution and the detail. In terms of other things, there's also continuous shot, so it will take an image really quickly, a countdown timer, so it will snap an image after three seconds. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Oasis, my first Insta Camera 2. This is a fun novelty toy camera, not something to be taken super seriously, and does have a very cute appearance, I have to say, with these uh, blue scion accents, rubber material that feels very comfortable to grip. Pretty fun to play around with, at least as a novelty item, not to be taken super seriously. Overall, it is a clever idea and a clever form factor, I have to admit, but definitely has room for some more improvements. So you can check out more details if interested in the links below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.